because God got a season for you. And if you trust in him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. Now, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. We're so excited to have everybody with us all over Metro Atlanta, all over the world. Literally, we hear from people everywhere, and we are so grateful. We're going to get our wonderful devotion started off with uh, Deacon Roger Long, Deacon Jason Raddick, and Trusty Jason Coffee. <laughs> We're so excited. Get ready. Hey. Uh, all and Trusty Shirley Stevenson. Get ready. We are in for a treat. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. What a beautiful day it is outside. It's a beautiful fall day. The Lord has blessed us to see another day that he made for us to just give him glory and give him honor. So we are so glad to be here with you to again today. And we're just going to let the Lord have his way as we give him the praise and honor that he so rightly deserves. Amen. Uh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a shelter in the time of war. I tell you, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Well, uh, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. But every time I turn my back, they scandalizing my name. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah. In the time of a battle. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah. In the time of a battle. He's a battle axe, yeah. In the time of a battle. Oh, he's a shelter in the time of a storm. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. Oh, he's a shelter in the time of a storm. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of battle. Oh, he's a shelter in the time of a storm. I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. In him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. Oh, he's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. He's a battle axe, yeah, in the time of a battle. Oh, he's a shelter in the time of a storm. Well, meet me, 
Jesus, meet me. Why don't you meet me in the middle of the air? If these two wings should fail me now, why don't you meet me with another pair? Oh, he's a battle last yell in the time of battle. Oh, he's a battle last yell in the time of battle. He's a battle last yell in the time of battle. He's a shelter in the time of a storm. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this morning I'll be reading the word of God from Psalms 91. Right. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fallen snare and from the deadly peasant. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not feel the terrors of night, nor the arrows that flies by day, nor the peasant that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroy at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come for you. I believe I'll say that again. A thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 may fall at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe, observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, once again, O oh Majesty, yes. we find ourselves in the need of prayer. But this morning, dear Father, we come not just asking for this, that, and the other. First and foremost, dear Father, we come just to lift up your name, for you are truly worthy to be praised. All we have to do, dear Father, is just take one step outdoors, dear Father, and the beautiful sky that you have given us. Just look at the sun shining one more time, dear Father. And for that, dear Father, we thank you for that fine privilege. We thank you for life, dear Father. And this morning, dear Father, as a congregation, we just want to say thank you for blessing us, dear Father. Thank you for keeping us together, dear Father, for 50 long years, dear Father. We thank you so much, dear Father, for this pastor and this first lady that you have given us this morning, this Father who have set a fine example for us in praise and worship, dear Father. And as we lift up this prayer to you, dear Father, we have them in our hearts and on our minds. First and foremost, we just want to say thank you for everything that you have allowed them to do on behalf of your kingdom and this congregation. And dear Father, we just pray that you might just continue to keep them in your hands, dear Father. Continue to bless them in all the ways. And then, dear Father, make sure no hurt, harm, or danger comes to them, dear Father. Provide for them, dear Father, the things that they have need of, dear Father. And help them to go on proclaiming your name in this world, dear Father. For this is indeed a sin sick world, dear Father, where men, women, and children still need to know that there is a Savior who is alive and well. And despite this pandemic, dear Father, He is still saving souls. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. And to this morning, dear Father, if it is your will, we just ask that you take your powerful hand and continue to stretch it over this entire congregation, yes, dear Father. Yes, sir. Whether they be our older members, dear Father, or even the younger members, dear Father, meet their needs, dear Father, where they are right now in the name of Jesus. That is our prayer this morning. And then, dear Father just want to thank you for everything that you've done for us, dear Father. Yeah. We don't take anything for granted, dear Father. We don't take the food you've given us for granted. We don't take the cars you've provided us for granted. We don't take shelter for granted. Dear Father, we don't take any of the resources, our jobs, or anything else for, for granted, dear Father. We thank you for these things. For your word said that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. 
And this morning, dear Father, we thank you as gift giver. Yes, sir. We thank you, dear Father, as the one who continues to show us grace and mercy, thank even you. when we don't deserve it. Thank you. Have your way this morning, dear Father, in our lives oh, and yes, in sir. this service, yes, dear sir. Father. We pray now, dear Father, in the name of your Son, that you might prepare our hearts and minds to receive a word from yes. you today, dear Father. Oh, yeah. Help us, dear Father, to never be the same again after we receive this word, dear Father. And not only that, help us to retain these words so that when we go out in the world, dear Father, when we go back to those jobs, when we call those loved ones on the telephone, dear Father, we're able to tell them what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And maybe, dear Father, we can remember it in such a way where they'll want to come closer to this God that we serve, dear Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then, too, dear Father, if it is your will, Help us to love each other, dear Father, oh, yeah. even as you love the church, dear Father. For your word tells us that people will know that we are your disciples by the love that we have for each other. And dear Father, we just want to thank you for the love that was shown last Friday. Surely the time of fellowship, just to see the smiling faces from the cars was good, dear Father. Just to hear those voices, dear Father. And just to be able to give expressions of love and thanks, dear Father, for this beautiful congregation, dear Father. Continue to have your will and your way in our lives, dear Father. And then too, dear Father, we know that we have sinned. We know that we have fallen short of your glory. We know that we have done things that haven't been pleasing in your sight, dear Father. But we just ask you, dear Father, to find favor with us, dear Father, and to forgive us for those things that we have done that haven't been pleasing in your sight. Continue, please, dear Father, to have mercy on us. And then, dear Father, it is our fervent wish, it is our desire, that when this race has been run, when the battle has been fought and when the victory has been won yes, that one day dear father we may hear the words well done thy good and faithful servant you members of Mount Ephraim well done well done well done this is Mount Ephraim's prayer today dear father and we pray that you might accept these words in the name of your loving son our blessed Savior Jesus Christ we pray amen and thank you Lord amen Amen. Can we give God some praise this morning? Hallelujah. Can we give him some true and honest yeah. praise? Hallelujah. Has he been good to anybody? Yes. Has he been forgiven to anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even, when, even when we haven't been as forgiven to people as we should be, Watch out. Watch out. he's still been there. Yes, sir. He's still been there. Oh, wow. I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling everything. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, I got a feeling everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 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 I got a feeling everything. Everything's gonna be alright. It'll be alright. In my mother, she told me everything's gonna be all right. Oh, my mother, she told me yes, she did. Everything's gonna, gonna be all right. Gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Be all right. And my father. He told me everything's everything gonna be alright. I said, my, my father, father he told yes, he me did. Everything's, everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 
right. Oh, oh, my father, he told me everything's gonna be all right. It'll be all right. Be all right. Yeah. Be all right. Now my sisters, they told me. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, my sister, she told me everything's gonna be all right. Hey, hey my sister, she told me everything's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Be all right. Oh, yeah. Told me everything's gonna be all right. Now how my oh, brother, he told me. Yes, he did. Everything's gonna be all right. Hey, hey my brother, he told me everything's gonna be all right. It'll be all right. Be all right. Oh yeah. Told me everything gonna be all right. Got down on my knees and oh, talked to him Jesus. this morning. He told he me, assured me everything's gonna be all right. Hey, 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 Jesus, he told me everything's gonna be all right. To be all right. Be all right. Oh yeah. gonna be all right gonna be all right it's gonna be all right gonna be all right it's gonna be all right gonna be all right it's gonna be all right gonna be all right no matter my situation gonna be all right it's gonna be all right gonna be all right because i know a man it's gonna be all right. 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 Yes, it's gonna be all right. 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 But when I'm up, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Even when I get down, it's gonna be all right. Don't know which way to go. I know it's gonna be all right. Sometimes I get lost, but it's still gonna be all right. It's 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 gonna be all right. Be all right. Be all right. If you know it's gonna be. If you know it's gonna be all right. See, yeah. When Jesus tell you it's going to be all right, you can take that to the bank. Amen. Amen. I feel all right this morning. Amen. We thank you all so much. We thank Deacon and Shirley Stevenson for joining us this morning. And, of course, we're always glad to have you back, brother. We miss you, brother Jason Coffey. Amen. We thank you so much for allowing us to serve you once again in praise and devotion. And at this time, we're going to turn the remainder of the service back into the hands of our First Lady Evangelist, Lorraine Jock White. To God be the glory. Let Amen. Let's thank our praise team this morning. Let's give them a big hand. They were absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah, in your home, in your car, wherever you are. Thank God. We believe everything's going to be all right. Because even though things seem disastrous in the world and things are happening that are out of our control, always remember, God is still in control. 
and he's behind the scenes working everything out. Everything, I said everything, is going to be all right. Dr. Angela Taylor, what's up? Amen, amen. Everything is going to be all right. We would like to take this opportunity to thank the Deacon Board for that wonderful praise and worship service. I am certain everybody out here knows that Mount Ephraim has come to have church this morning. Amen. Oh, yeah. Even the musicians started off with my soul is anchored in the Lord. Yeah. So we know that everything is going to be all right because all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, and the entire Mount Ephraim Baptist Church family, let me welcome you to our 1045 AM virtual service. We pray that a song is sung, a prayer is prayed, a scripture is read like Shirley Stevenson read this morning, and the word comes forth this morning that will richly touch your heart. And when that time comes and Dr. White extends the invitation of discipleship to you, we pray that you give God your heart. And then when we're able to come back to Mount Ephraim in one physical unified body, we ask that you give Dr. White your hand. To those celebrating a birthday on today, we say happy birthday and may God bless you. To those celebrating the anniversary on today and this past week, we say happy anniversary to you as well. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. The announcements are as follows. Every Wednesday at 7.30 a.m., we have a prayer call with our pastor. We invite you to be a part of that prayer call, and you can do so by going to our Facebook page and our website and getting that telephone number and that access code. I will make sure that it is listed in the comments section of the Facebook page so that you can have that number. Please join us every Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. As Michelle Manley Davis says, Wednesdays here at Mount Ephraim are winning Wednesdays. We ask that you join us at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays for WOW, worship, without, worship on Wednesdays with our pastor, where he does a fantastic Bible study. He has started a new series that you don't need, you don't need to miss it. You need to be there because during these troubled times, you need to know what you're standing on. And he is talking about the principles of the Baptist faith. So we ask that you join us every Wednesday starting at 7 o'clock on Saturdays at 6 o'clock p.m. We have our power again. That's Facebook Live. Please join in. You it is a phenomenal service. And then on Sundays, until the Lord says so, we're coming to you virtually at 7.30 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. via Facebook Live, our live streaming, and through our website. Please join in. For those of you all, you all have asked, yes, we still have our Word of Faith Ministries um, that comes on on Saturday with Dr. White. Is preaching, so please look for that as well. He, he is doing that. And now we have an official YouTube channel that records all of Dr. White's sermons. So we ask that you go to YouTube, look for the official Mount Ephraim Baptist Church channel, and we ask that you subscribe so that you will always, always be in contact with Mount Ephraim. We would like to thank everyone who joined in with us on last Friday. We understand that during these turbulent times, food disparity is so great here and all over the United States. And on last Friday, we were able to give out five to 800 boxes of food to the community. And we just want to say thank you, a special thank you to Reverend, to our pastor, Dr. White, who um, ordered this to come into fruition, who led us, who guide us every step of the way. We say thank you, Dr. White, for giving us this charge. To Sister White, for being his support staff and for being his support team, we say thank you for what you are doing with Dr. White. Reverend Timothy Starks, we thank you for your partnership. To the brother Willie Watkins in the, Will in the Willie Watkins Funeral Home, we say thank you. Jason Graddick, all the contacts, we appreciate it. Deacon Roger Long for delivering baskets to our seniors and to um, 
making sure that Dr. Ada Farmer was okay, we say thank you. To Sister Sheila Barnes and the Office's Resource Team Ministry, we appreciate everything you did on Friday. Deaconess Marilyn Mitchell and the Mount Ephraim Super Seniors team, God bless you for everything. To the Reverend Jackie Hubbard, who donated $500 so that we can make sure that the first 50 people receive special financial gifts. We appreciate you too. Mrs. Stephanie Hill Shepherd, thank you for your creativity. Jackie Beatty, thank you for your continued support. Katrina Barnum Scott, thank you. And Carolyn Bridges, may God continue to bless each of you in all that you do. And for your continued support of the outreach of Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, please know that your work is greatly appreciated. We would also like to say thank you to every Mount Ephraim member, every community member that calls Mount Ephraim on a daily basis, a weekly basis, asking Dr. White and the entire Mount Ephraim team, how can we support Mount Ephraim during these times? We even have other people who have experienced some difficulties on their own, but they insist on continuing to support Mount Ephraim. We say thank you for that. For those of you all who would like to make don donations, we ask that you download the Giveify app to your smartphone, your tablet, and then after that, select Mount Ephraim and follow the prompts to make your donations. You can also go to our website and click the donate button to make your donations as well. And finally, to those of you all who enjoy the more traditional form of giving, we ask that you make your checks and your money orders payable to Mount Ephraim Baptist Church and then send that to Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. Mount Ephraim, when you are making a change in your life, right. whether it is your eating habits, whether it's to incorporate exercise, whether it's to change your demeanor and your attitude, it is always important to have an accountability partner. Because in having an accountability partner, you can, nine times out of ten, stick to that change. Well, Mount Ephraim, has agreed to be your accountability partner as it pertains to voting. We are in turbulent times and everyone needs to vote. Last night on the news, it was announced that there are organizations being intentionally designed to stop the black vote. We know in 2016 that the reason why things didn't go another way is because black voters didn't show up. So Mount Ephraim, with Dr. White's approval, will now become everybody's accountability partner. So every Sunday, my question to you is, have you made your plan to vote? If you haven't, start doing so, because your vote is your voice and your vote matters. So continue to mask up, wash your hands, practice social distancing, do your census, and get ready and let's vote. Brother Roger Long, if you would. Good morning, Mount Ephraim. God's blessed and highly favored congregation. God's Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to pin these words at Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brothers, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Here Paul was encouraging us to program our minds with spiritual thoughts that are uplifting and worthy of praise. During this challenging season, it is more important than ever to seek God's help in training our minds to focus on what is truly important, and that is that we be about our Father's business. In this endeavor, we need look no further than our pastor and our First Lady to witness how they have truly continued to be about our Father's business in the middle of a global pandemic. Consider these accomplishments that occurred during the pandemic under the blessed leadership of Pastor Dr. White. 
When word came that the churches were ordered to close, but were allowed a staff of 10 to 12 worshipers, Pastor White had four to five days to organize a virtual service. He put together a staff with the assignment to present a service that Mount Ephraim would be proud of. Six months later, we have an average of five to 6,000 viewers every Sunday. Surely, Mount Ephraim has become a church without walls. Pastor White and Mrs. White have presented virtual seminars on grief, anger, depression, and anxiety. Pastor and Mrs. White presented a Power Talk interview on church anniversary Sunday, which received more than 20,000 views. Sister Marilyn Mitchell took it upon herself to make sure that our super seniors would have everything they needed during the pandemic without charge. This came to fruition with the help of Mrs. White, who utilized her contacts from her time as a radio talk show host. Surprise pizza lunches were sent to several emergency room hospitals throughout Metro Atlanta to say thank you for your service from Mount Ephraim Baptist Church. Our pastor asked Mrs. White and Dr. Adeline McElroy to facilitate COVID-19 testing. And to date, with the help of Dr. McElroy, there have been two events and another test to come in October. Many thanks to the Fulton County Sheriff's Department for traffic deputies, the men of Mount Ephraim, and many others who volunteered to help. And again, this all came at no cost to Mount Ephraim. Also, as was mentioned by Dr. Taylor earlier, Pastor asked us to set up food giveaways for the community. Last Saturday, last Friday rather, was the first one. It was organized by Mrs. White, Dr. Taylor, Marilyn Mitchell, Deacon Jason Granick, and Officers Resource Ministry President Sheila Barnes, with the promise that there would be more to come, again, at no cost to Mount Ephraim. Pastor White preaches four times per week, plus a dynamic weekly prayer call on Wednesday mornings. Mrs. White organized a virtual prayer breakfast along with Dr. Taylor and Stephanie Hill Shepherd that was on Zoom with more than 100 people attending. Our Vacation Bible School was taught completely online this year. Our Sunday School Superintendent, Dr. R Reverend Hubbard, uh, has instituted a Zoom Sunday School class. Talk about a church keeping up with the times. And to put the icing on the cake, our pastor, this man right here, was honored at the National Baptist Convention for pastoring for 50 years. Even though we did it one time this morning, it is worth celebrating and standing on your feet one more time to celebrate our beloved pastor, the Reverend Dr. R.L. White too. Thank you, pastor, for your service. Service and unwavering commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This couple is an amazing group of, an amazing couple to have at the helm of our church. So Mount Ephraim, as you can see, we have so much to be proud of when we think of our pastor and our first lady and their tireless efforts on behalf of the kingdom and for our benefit. So now as we approach the final week of our pastor and wife celebration, I appeal to you to reach into the recesses of your hearts and minds and truly think about how blessed we are to have this man and this woman as our pastor and first lady. Let us as a congregation set the goal of overwhelming them with tangible gifts and messages of congratulations over the next week. I encourage each of you who have not yet made a tangible demonstration of appreciation to put your gift for Dr. and Mrs. White in your offering envelope and designate the amount you would like for them to have. You also have the option of addressing your gift directly to the attention of Dr. and Mrs. White and mailing it to them in this manner. Dr. and Mrs. White, care of Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia, 30314. 
for members of the congregation and the listening audience using Givelify. You also may appropriate your gift by selecting the Pastor and Wife Appreciation tab. Remember, when they see your gift or open that envelope with your name on it, you're letting them know how you really feel about them. So again, my friends, let us shower them with love over the next seven days. And finally, remember, next week is the climax of our pastor and wife appreciation celebration. There's a wonderful treat in the form of an interview that will air immediately after the 1045 service, so please stay tuned. Again, this is sure to be a treat that you don't want to miss. Mount Ephraim, I thank you for your time this morning, and as always, it is my prayer that God will continue to keep his hands on our wonderful pastor and lovely first lady, continue to bless each of you, and continue to bless the continuing efforts here at Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, the greatest church in the world. Thank you, Deacon Roger Long, for your announcements. Thank you, Dr. Angela Taylor. Regarding the food giveaway that we had on Friday, uh, one of our partners, Pastor Hicks Starks, said that he was so, he said, you know, the bus was a little bit late. And he said, that, but you all just laughed and talked and pl played with each other and had a good time like kids. I said, we were so happy to see each other. <laughs> we, we weren't worried about any truck being that late, but it was wonderful to be together. And I definitely want to say a special thank you to uh, Deacon Lloyd Morris and all the dynamic men of Mount Ephraim United for Christ. And Dr. Taylor mentioned Jackie Beatty, Carolyn Bridges, Katrina Bottom Scott, and I'm going to thank J Deacon Jason Graddick and Sheila Barnes and Marilyn Mitchell, all the super seniors and the greeters. I want to thank my partner, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, because he was definitely instrumental in helping us pull that all together. And my sister, Reverend Jackie Hubbard, she gave me $500 because she said she wanted to put $20 in envelopes and pass them out to people until the envelopes were gone. And she did that. Jackie came over here herself and brought all of those envelopes stuffed with $20 bills. And I thank her. She's always there when it's time to help somebody. Thank you, Reverend Jackie Hubbard. Also, Dr. Angela Taylor and Stephanie Hill Shepherd, to Angela for her every creative idea, Stephanie for doing all of the flyers for the church all the time. She's right there no matter what we need. She's ready to do those flyers. Everybody who volunteered, everybody. We had probably about 30 some people here from Mount Ephraim. And we just had a good time with each other. And I wanna thank Dr. White because he said we need to test and we need to feed. And I want y'all to go and find out how to get that done. And he was pushing and rushing and pushing. When he wants something done, it's on his heart. God's told him about it, we need to move. So we got it done, and we thank God, and we thank you, Dr. White, for your vision. We thank you so much. And now we're going to hear from a sister that can show enough saying, and that's my sister. Oh, come on, girl. Her name is Judy Johnson. Come on, Judy. Good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to be here. I am so excited to be living. I am so excited that we have a pastor and a first lady. I'd have never thought. 50 years. And I'm a part of that because I've been here. <laughs> Thank you. Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. Y'all gonna help me sing? All right. Oh! 
one more time. Jordan River, I'm bound to cross. Whoa, Jordan River, oh yeah, I'm bound to cross. I come to tell you that Jordan River, I'm bound, I'm bound to cross. I've got one more. My father, he'll be waiting. My father can't help me to cross. Oh, father, he'll be waiting. He can't help me to cross. Oh, my father, he'll be waiting. He can't help me to cross. Y'all, yeah, my mother, she'll be waiting. Mother can't help me to cross. Oh, my mother, will be waiting. She can't help me to cross. Oh, my mother, be waiting. She can't help me to cross. About this old song, yeah. Listen, y'all. Jesus, he'll be waiting. Jesus gonna help me to cross. Oh, Jesus will be waiting. He's gonna help me. He's gonna help me to cross. Oh, Jesus. He's gonna help me to cross. He's gonna help me to cross. something about that old school. I'm from Bainbridge, Georgia, and we had this old church. No, no organ, no nothing. Nothing but your hand and your feet. And you talking about some church? Somebody back there in the back would just strike out saying something like this. Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I made it over. Made it over. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus made it over, made it over, made it over. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I made it over, made it over. Yeah.
Hallelujah is the highest praise. Oh, God, and take it. where change takes place when we're in the presence of the you can't be the oh, same yeah. Thank you, Lord. when you're in the presence of the Lord when you come out that's where change takes place it might be a small change but you'll notice some change the presence of the Lord and now ladies and gentlemen I'm so excited to bring to bring us the word of God our pastor who was honored by the National Baptist Convention for serving as pastor and founder of Mount Ephraim for 50 years. And we're so excited about that. And I'm talking about none other than Dr. R. L. White, Jr. There are times we think no one loves us. There are times we think no one really cares. But there is one, only one, who really knows the love, and he loves me, he really loves me, he loves me. God really can. He really loves me. Mm -hmm. The way gets rough sometimes. The mountains get so hard, so hard, so hard to climb. But there is one, only one, who really knows the Lord. Yeah. 
again one more time say yes talk much. I just want to say thank you. Everybody who just got recognized by saying thank you, I can say ditto. Because you have been so, so wonderful. Just want to say to my music staff, I'm going to need you to stay with me a few minutes after service. This year, the General Missionary Baptist Convention of Georgia we have to do the convention virtually and I'm on to preach the convention sermon and they said that they wanted a group to sing and since we can't get too many in here I've asked the chorale to come and since we haven't been together in so long rehearse just one number and I'd like for our musicians to be here, our engineer, our camera crew, because this will be played in 800 different churches. And I'm, my wife is to introduce me during this time. And I just want to say that I think that Mount Ephraim is one of the greatest churches in this country. Amen. And to have been honored among, I think there's somewhat several million Baptists in this country, the largest denominational body in this country, the National Baptist Convention. We're going to call these names they need our prayers. Amen. Beverly Comer, Teresa Copeland, Stacy Franklin, Dr. Ada Farmer, one of my officers, I think Brother Larry told me he stopped by, she was doing good, but she's waiting on Red Lobster. I guess she's doing fine. Evangelist Amanda Duckworth and her mother, who's in the hospital. Sister Pat Smith, who suffers now from an attack of cancer. But she went back to the, take a test to see how if things were working. And they were shocked to find how fast she is recovering. Pat, we thank God for you. Little Jaden, who had an operation this week, and his grandmother told me that he came out just fine. Amen. Sister Bernice Montgomery and her husband Zeke Montgomery. Sister Laverne Jackson. is healing very well. Thank God for you. 
Sister Beverly Glenn buried her husband this week. Beverly, we want you to know that your church is praying for you. Reverend Alvin King's mother is ill, but getting better every day. Sister Diane Johnson, we know your situation. Sister Milligan <clears throat> called me this week and I want her to know that by the time this service is over she's going to be feeling so much better. We called Sister Cook Cookie she lost her last surviving sister this week. We're trying to keep our family, the church family together. When the Israelites were taken from their home into a far city, they felt like so many of us feel now I'll be glad when I get home 137 Psalm said and we wept when we remembered Zion and we have some members now that are calling saying pastor when are we coming home All I can say, it's not going to be as long as it has been. But we got to keep praying for each other and loving each other. We're going to pray now. And I believe that God answers, as I said earlier today, we got living proof among us, Brother Jason Coffey, Amen. who went through so much. But as he sang his song today, I know he was healed. Sister Copeland, who was attacked by the virus, and we prayed with and for her, and on last Saturday morning, she was able to pray for that conference. Sister Hartnett was attacked by the same virus. If you had heard her when we first found about it, found out about it. But then one morning she called sounding stronger than just about anybody else. It lets me know that God answers prayer. And during this time, Reverend Lee Franklin and myself, we've been trying to comfort those who have death in the family and it's been many but we are still trusting in God let us pray thank you Lord for letting us come together again as a congregation. Thank you for keeping us together. Over these past few months, 
Lord, we've lost some. Some are still sick. But you brought us anyhow. And we've come through trials and tribulations. And if it had not been for you on our side, we wouldn't be here today. So we want to say thank you. Thank you for how you have kept us and how you have never left us. And now, oh God, here we are, standing at the altar, recognizing that we need you today. Our country is in a bad shape. But we know you can touch in the White House and let them know that you are still God. You can touch in the governor's mansion. In the name of Jesus, touch, Lord. You are able to touch at City Hall and bring peace in the midst of confusion. Now, Lord, now, Lord, we ask you right now to bless these services. As we go out over the airwaves, let these airwaves touch somebody's heart. Let somebody be saved. Let somebody be delivered. Have mercy, Lord. And when we will have gone down from this place, let your Holy Spirit guide us and keep us in your care and when praying days are all over and when we've got to go reeling and rocking somewhere in a dying room please Lord give us a home somewhere where the wicked should cease from troubling somewhere where the weary should be at rest somewhere oh, somewhere around your throne these and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Amen and amen. Come ye disconsolate. <clears throat> to those of us who have been bereaved, God knows all about what you're going through. And all of us need to be consoled sometime and wherever you are today I want to let you know that God is able to help bring peace in your life 
I didn't even ask the background to help me with this, but I know they're going to do it good. And I thank God for them. Thank God for my wife. Stand right by my side. To our church clerk. God bless you. y'all help me to say this come come he is come so wherever Come on. Come on. Permanently meal. with me. Come on. The seat, the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Yeah, 
heaven then one more time oh oh say special thanks again to Deacon Jason Graddock for making sure that whatever I need when I come is there and thank God for Deacon Roger Long I mean he can speak can he and we thank God for him there's a word from the Lord. First Samuel chapter 18 verses 6 through 9. And it came to pass as they came When David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all of the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has killed his thousands and David his 10,000. Saul was very angry and the saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000 and to me they ascribe but thousands. And what can he have more than this kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. I want to talk today about my insecurity is ruining my life. My insecurity is ruining my life. It has often been said that the most important time in a child's life is between birth and the first five years, others say 12 years. If a child does not have the blessing of being emotionally nourished, there's a majority chance that this child will be insecure in the thing that mean the most important in life as an adult. Amen. What that means is how that child is and 
the correct term is socialized, but how that child is reared up. If there has not been enough emotional support, that child will grow up as an adult and will look at life at the wrong way. One of the negatives that large families face is the fact that when you have a good number of children in the home, it is almost impossible for each child to receive the emotional nurturing needed to grow to be emotionally mature. Amen. Why? Because the parents did not have enough time to meet the individual need of each child. And with every experience, if the child is left alone to interpret what has happened, then the child will have a tendency to overreact when things go wrong. If a child sees parents arguing and fighting, it oftentimes breeds fear whenever violence is threatened even in adulthood. And if the child reacts too strongly, because sometimes their very first experience at going to school will be the first time they will have been separated from their guardians. And that child looks and see the parents leaving him or her for long periods. That child has a tendency to fear abandonment. That's why the baby cries so hard when you're leaving. You, but mommy coming back to get your baby. No, I want to go with it now because I'm feeling like you are abandoning me. And then at times when mom and dad separate and that child feels like that they have abandoned me and that's why it's necessary that if you are a parent, if you got to separate, you need to get together and talk to that child and tell that child, this is not your fault. Amen. Amen. Now, whether you know it or not, the grown up you still has a part of that child in you. And the emotional decisions you made in your childhood, your early perceptions, if they were wrong and never explained to you, many of these decisions you make may be overacting in life's situations. Example. If you were never assured or re 
assured as a child that you were needed, wanted, or really cared for, you may tend to feel like nobody cares. <coughs> you feel rejection. And these issues tend to grow up inside of you. And the ghosts of your past can be the reason you sabotage your own relationship by being insecure, wondering if anybody really loves me. Abraham Maslow, the famous psychologist, in his hierarchy of human, human needs, says personal security is one of the building blocks needed for an individual to become all that you can be. Let me put that another way. If you want your child to become all that he or she can, then you will need to be concerned about whether that child knows that he or she is loved. Amen. Maslow called the highest form that one could reach is called self-actualization. But you can't make it unless your security needs are met. And one thing I found out is the fact that if you are an insecure person, the main reason for you to admit it is the fact that you try to hide your insecurities. And some of us have kept it so close to our hearts And you have tried to get better by yourself. Well, I want to let you know something. You can't do it by yourself. It will take the aid of the Holy Spirit to lead you to a healing. you've become so willing or you will need to become willing to make yourself vulnerable or transparent to another human being. What am I saying? Some of us don't trust anybody and there are some things that we hold in our hearts that nobody knows is there because you never told another person. And the one thing that happens is you never tend to get better unless you will be able to trust a human being with where you stand. Now you got to be careful who you tell your business to. As a counselor, I have had so many people to come and tell 
the deepest secrets in their hearts. And when they do, God starts to heal our emotional wounds. And I have found out that everybody in that we know about is insecure somewhere. There's no such thing as a person who is perfect in everything. Examples. One may be a super performer on the job and everybody gives them accolades on how well they perform. But when it comes to managing their own finances, they are insecure. Or some parents might seem to be to the public excellent parents, but they too are insecure in the way that they discipline their children. Some teachers are excellent at giving out advice, but when it comes to practicing what they teach, they are insecure. The pastor who seems to have it all together when preaching about faith. But whenever you see them, some of them, they are always in financial binds, having to borrow money. And you say, are you the one that preached about the Lord will make a way? If the Lord will make a way, why is it you always humming and bumming? There are some insecurities in all of our lives. I want to ask you today, and you don't have to tell anybody. I was looking at all of us singing a while ago, music playing. You would think that nobody in here is insecure. But truth tells me that smiling faces tell lies. Amen. And somewhere in your life there are some insecurities. I want to ask you now to admit where your insecurity is. For this reason, God made us social beings, which says we need each other. And one of the reasons that we've been getting depressed during this pandemic season is because we need to have someone to fellowship with. You need to have somebody that needs a hug. Come on, somebody. We need somebody to reaffirm us, to encourage us, yes, even compliment us. God made us to need each other. Amen. And that's why God put special people in our lives 
to be our emotional support. Do you know why some people are so lonely? They have nobody to encourage them. Amen. And everybody needs encouragement. There's a story about Maestro, who was an expert conductor of the opera. And one night after the concert was over, the crowd was standing giving applause. And it seemed like he was not paying any attention. He had his eyes fixed in the area of the balcony. And in the balcony was his teacher. His teacher had not shown any emotions, but he kept watching him. And finally, his teacher did this, nodding that he was pleased with what he had done. Then he could hear the rest of the applause. Amen. That's why God gives us somebody that ought to be there for you when the world is against you to tell you to hold on a little while longer. Amen. I, uh, I have to admit that preachers, teachers are often insecure because they want to make sure that they are getting through when they preach or teach. When I get through on Sunday preaching, I always like to go back to my study and then I ask the Lord, did I please you? But next to that, I'm looking for that special person that God has in my life, my wife. I want to know what does she think about it? And you might not admit it, but you want the approval of somebody near you. That's why couples get in trouble because instead of them being complimentary, they are tearing each other down all the time. Preach white. And we are insecure when we are alone. To be insecure means that you're not confident, that you have a fear of failure, you are uncertain and anxious about life, and there is no real peace because you are wrestling with your own insecurities. Amen. What can you do to become more secure within yourself? One thing that you need to do, if you will, trace your actions or reactions back to your childhood. And you will recognize that the way you were in your childhood is the way you are now. Come on, somebody. 
And that's the one thing that many of us fail to do is to go back to our atmosphere while we were children. When people used to go for counseling, we would counsel that person. But we now know that you must also be concerned about the atmosphere that produced that kind of person. Amen. And you will not be able to face your present problems until you go back and resolve that emotional debt that's been with you since you were a child. Amen. And some of us are so insecure that you can tell us and assure us of something this minute. And tomorrow they're going to ask you the same thing. Amen. What are the symptoms of being insecure? I'm so glad you asked. Jealousy. I know that's a big word. It's not big in terms of the word itself, but it explains a deep feeling of insecurity. Or when you become overly anxious, all the time worrying about what might happen. Some of you get up in the morning and start saying, suppose I have a wreck going to work. Suppose I get fired today. Come on, somebody. And some of us are overly suspicious. I don't care what you do and what you say, they suspect you are lying and you got to prove to them that you are not lying. And then some of us are just plain mean. Do you know anybody like that? Now the way that jealousy, anxiety, and being suspicious means. I can give you an example. They can be 30 minutes to an hour late coming home. And when you walk in the door, the mouth is stuck out a mile long. Where you been? Where I've been? I stopped somewhere. Where did you stop? Who'd you talk to? All this over 30, 40 minutes late. You'd be surprised what can go on with you 40 or 30 minutes. I need to know where you were. I was talking with some of my friends. Who? Because I'm going to go and call them and see if you lying. And then you say, you need to stop being so jealous. I ain't jealous. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we cannot recognize how insecure we are. I like to say, jokingly, of course, you go to the football game, and when the team gets in the huddle, you think they're talking about you. <laughs> the 
that's rough. Amen. Don't you get tired of being that way? As I was looking for an example this week, I thought about King Saul, who was so insecure that it disrupted his whole life. He had one goal in mind, and that was to kill David because he was upset about the way that the women sang their song about David. And he was so focused on killing David that his insecurity caused him to lose objectivity. Does that remind you of anybody today who cannot get in the conversation without trying to tear Mr. Obama down? Whose goal is to undo what President Obama did? I suggest that that person has become so insecure that he cannot be objective about serving all of God's children. Saul became mean and unreasonable and his insecurities were driven by fear. If you will ever get over your insecurities, you will have to build a faith in God, not based on what others think. But you need to pray for your faith, for God to increase your faith. Saul went down in Israelite history as not being able to perform the way that God wanted him to perform. And sometimes you can be so filled with hate that you cannot do what you ought to be able to do because you are preoccupied by your own hatred. Preach white. Well, let me tell you this. The enemy, Satan himself, likes for you to be insecure. Why? Because he knows that you are talented. You got a lot on the ball that if you were not so jealous, you could move up. So he said, let, let me keep you angry. Go to church angry. Why? Because somebody spoke to your sweet one. You got to tell, why did they talk to you that way? You get where you can come to church, you can't even hear the message for watching and being insecure. Amen. Don't you get tired of being embroiled in confusion because of your own insecurity? Can I tell you today that if God gave you what you got, can anybody 
take them from you unless you in all of your insecurities treat them so mean that they'll find somebody else I know y'all don't like that what is that saying what it is saying is what God has for you it is for you and nobody I don't care how much it seems like they are on the ball and that's what makes us insecure because we feel like they're so talented my mate might like them better than me because we know what kind of woman or what kind of man that they like preach white and you can be so absorbed in watching that person until you cannot watch yourself if God has given you somebody and you treat them right nobody can take them from you I used to have a preacher friend he's dead now he was present the night Mount Ephraim organized he said to me one day and this has been over 50 years ago Bro White I said yes sir he said nobody can take what you got don't care how talented they are somebody can come in here and preach 10 times better than you but when you get through they still love you did y'all hear that so you don't have to be worried about whether somebody going to take what you got as long as you treat what you got the way God wants you to treat it and many times when we have not done all that we could do sometimes we are the cause of driving somebody away from us I often say that you can treat a dog so bad that the dog will go get his bag of bones and that dog goes where somebody will care for him. So don't spend your time trying to find something wrong. But spend your time getting better. Did you hear me? And then if you never make it, God has something better for you. But being insecure stops your progress in life. And that's why I say you have to go back because when a person is insecure in adulthood, it came from childhood. And I only have myself as a reference point because as a child, I was insecure because my parents couldn't buy for me the thing that other children had. And how they used to tease me because I had holes in my shoes. And I was afraid to pick my foot up because kids can be very cruel. I felt inferior I felt like I wasn't up to the other children now let me tell you how that worked out in childhood and how it goes in adulthood when I was president of the NAACP I was invited to represent our branch at one of these highly sophisticated places 
where people can have more degrees than on the thermometer. And I never will forget I went there. And I said before I went in there, I know these folks. They don't care anything about preachers. And I'm not going to stay here any longer than I have to because I will not have them looking down on me. So we all had to go in a certain room. Here I am standing kind of off to myself. And one of those of us said, hey, uh, Dr. White, yes, are you the one that's on television on Saturday night? I said, yes. My wife loves you. And anybody she loves to hear them preach, I love them too. I'm like, huh? And somebody else, my granddaddy used to go to your church. And when they got through with me, I started wondering, why was I so wrong? You know why? I was projecting onto them the way I felt about myself. Did you hear that? It taught me that you can't tell what other folks think. You can't make yourself a judge of what somebody else feel. But what really is the purpose is know what you feel about yourself. And I had projected onto them the way that I was feeling about myself. And it started in my childhood. I'm trying to help somebody today. So if you are insecure, you need to go back and begin to work with where it started. And then you can begin to reprogram your mind. That's why Romans 12 and 2. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Can I tell you today? God wants you to be renewed. Lord, have mercy. Renew your way of thinking. In other words, stop making your negative confessions even to yourself. But you will need to get to a point where you can say, I am somebody. I might be broke, but I'm somebody. I might cannot dress like others can dress, but I'm somebody. Why am I somebody? Because God made me. And God doesn't make any junk. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Now, it can take you more than a month to change your way of thinking. But I'm here to tell you today that if you commit your way unto the Lord, the Bible says you can bring it to pass. So now, I thank God for what he has done in my life. I know there are others who are celebrated preachers, but uh, if they never give me the credit, 
it really doesn't matter to me as long as God loves me <clears throat> Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong this is the part I like about that son yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me how do I know it because the Bible tells me so the Bible tells me how they rushed him out on Calvary's hill the Lord he had enough power that he could have called legions of angels to rescue him but he didn't do it for himself but he had you in mind and what he was saying about you and you and you you are precious enough that I'm going to let them pierce me in my side I'll let them nail nails in my hand I'll let them put me in Joseph's new tomb I'll stay in that grave yet all night all night Friday night I'll stay in that grave all day Saturday I'll stay in that grave all night Saturday night but to show you how much I love you early I say early early Sunday morning I'm gonna get out of that grave saying all power is in my hand I did it so that you could be saved and if you're saved you stop worrying about what folks think about you because you know I love you enough to die for you aren't you glad today that somebody sure enough loves you aren't you glad today that when the world turns it back on you the Lord will stand by your side I want to tell him thank you ah, thank you ain't the Lord good somebody ought to say he's good all the time and I'm going to praise him every chance I get when I think about what he done for me my soul cries hallelujah I thank the Lord for saving me and I'm not going to let my own insecurities ruined my life because the Lord gave me and you some promises that in spite of who may be against you one thing you got to know he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you and I would rather have the Lord on my side than to have the world against me and when the Lord changed me now you know what 
I got some insecurities. But I'll try just about anything. My wife tells me all the time, you got the act of, you got the gift of faith. Because I know what God can do. How do I know it? I was shackled by head, be burdened beneath a load of guilt and shame and then the hand of Jesus just touched me and now I'm no longer the same. When I meet meet people that I used to know, they say, "Why? How did you change so much?" You know, I tell them, "He touched me." Well, he touched me, and oh. Run the joy that floods my soul. Mm-hmm. Something, something happened, and now I know. Touch me and he made me me whole. He touched me. Has anybody ever been touched by the Lord? He touched me and oh, oh the joy that floods my soul I can't explain it but all I can say something Something happened And now I know He touched me And he made Me me whole anybody ever been touched by the Lord I don't know about you but I can feel him right now if you can feel him right now and I know it's not many of us in here the devil thought he could stop up from praising so he could keep us away but I got just enough in here to say yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Anybody know the Lord been good to you? Anybody know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be here today. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. 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 
Thank you, Lord. And now you can feel when the services are over. Some of you listening to us now, I want you to have a, a reaffirmation of your faith. Sister Stevenson read this morning the 91st Psalm. And I said, oh, how great a psalm can be. Where well, it says, don't fear anything coming near your dwelling place. Or he shall give his angels charge over you. Aren't you glad? You may not see your angel. God got some standing right beside you. Trying to tell you, I know you're going through something. But what you're going through, I'm able to carry you through. And that's why I want to tell him, thank you, Lord. 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 I know we got to go, but Jason, Jason had to miss church several weeks because the devil wanted to stop him from singing so much. And I know we got to close out now, but just say yes. Come on. Say yes, yes, say yes, oh, oh yeah. say, say yes, say One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. How I thank you, Lord. Y'all take that mic from me. You're sounding too good over there now. Ain't that all right? God bless you today. And I want everybody to stand right now as we get ready to go. Thank you to my background. Thank you. Sister Angela Taylor, Sister Marilyn, thank you. To those who are working in the finance room, thank you. Thank my camera crew, and I'm going to ask them to give us a few minutes if I can get as many of the corral together. 
and we've got to pre-tape this session that will be shown in November today. And Sister White's going to have to stand up and introduce me like, well, it's before the whole convention, really. And then we all are going to go home. But let's give us our theme and we're on our way out of here, man. Are you ready to move? Ready? Come on. Now may the grace of our once crucified and risen Savior rest rule and abide with this his people now henceforth and forevermore. Let us sing together. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful day.